Day 7, Wada Lake. Today was our last day at Wada Lake Lodge, and we would wake up and have breakfast. I got up just before 8 a.m. This was our accommodations. We had beds, and then over here we had the bathroom. Howdy. There's the twins. There's Jason. Watch out, Jeff. Oh, yeah. And uh, BGH tied to the dock, ready to go. Okay, boys and girls of Water Lake having a good time. You getting eaten by mosquitoes. See you later. Bye. Mosquitoes were definitely an issue, but we managed to get a photo together. We had to do one last flyby over the lodge before continuing on our way. There was that waterfall. On this short flight over to Yellowknife, I flew with Daryl, while Jeff flew with Myron, gracefully flying in his float plane. The trip had been a success. Once we arrived to Yellowknife, Vic was there with the Suburban to pick us up. It was always nice to have someone meet us upon arrival. He drove us to the camper at his house. The Suburban had been acting up, so Myron and Vic changed the brake fluid. Vic's older daughter came back from the tennis tournament. In the evening, we made reservations at Prospector's restaurant to eat. Paul Lazarus showed up in his old red car for dinner. Today was a short day, and day 8 we would depart. Day 8, July 3rd. Here was that sky van again. And outside was some Adair with their Dornier 228. Flights up from Vancouver to Yellowknife were really expensive, so Richard was more than happy to pay for the fuel to get up to Yellowknife. Back to sleep, woke up at 20 after 7. No. Where did, you, where did you sleep last night? Okay. Any commentary you'd like? This is uh, Shake Water at uh, Yellowknife. This is uh, Hospitality at its finest and the crew. Thanks to Wanda and Vic for making our stay in Yellowknife enjoyable. We departed Yellowknife, taking a last look at the place. We started our journey southbound, and it would take us about eight hours of flying to get back to the lower mainland of BC. However, we would stop at Charlotte Lake halfway down and visit one of Myron's friends named Frank, who used to work for Air Canada for 30 years, but now is retired. We flew down together with Daryl following us nearby. And there was me sitting in the back seat with all the luggage. I had really enjoyed my time up in Yellowknife. In the morning, Paul said he would be five minutes late. Myron asked if it was a regular five minutes or a yellow knife five minutes. Anyways, we went to meet him at the Igloo Inn. The atmosphere in yellow knife reminded me of the Andy Griffith show and how everyone knew everyone. We stopped at Fort St. John's to pick up some fuel and then took off. Fort St. John's was another peaceful community in Northern British Columbia. We had to deal with some weather going down southbound, but luckily we managed to get through without any major hassles. Finally, we made it to Charlotte Lake, where Frank had a cabin. We buzzed his cabin first to let him know that we were here, and then turned around to land on the lake. There was a dock that we would tie up the plane at. It looked like he was at home. We landed safely at Charlotte Lake, met with Frank, and spent the night there, and enjoyed the evening. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for day 9 and our last day.